Hello guys, so this is Mustafa Busban. I'm a data scientist at Sojati, at Sojati Labs. I work mainly on developing machine learning and deep learning models, data analysis and data engineering at Sojati. I've been uh, working for Sojati for two and a half years now, and I hope continuing for even more. So now I'm go today I'm going to talk to you about uh, one project, uh, artificial intelligence made music. So can we today using artificial intelligence generate music? Well, we're going to start with a brief history. So we need to know that music is older than languages. It's really older than languages. Human has been were listening to the to the sound of what's surrounding it from from the sound of the wind, sound of different animals, the sound of birds, and the first music really came from nature. I mean, especially when we start to craft tools. So each time we craft tools, we made sounds, and humans start to recognize that some sounds are more beautiful than the others. Until the 70s, automatic music became algorithmics, which means we ask ourselves, can we represent music using algorithmics? Can we have a representation of the music, mathematical representation of music, and use algorithmics to, to process it. So we moved from classical instrument, I mean like physical instruments, like piano, guitar, uh, I don't know, saxophone, whatever instruments, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of instruments, <clears throat> I mean physical, that were played by a musician, a human, that needed a lot of practice and a lot of knowledge with the, with the music to be played. And then we move to synthesizers, so more analogical, more technical instrument, an electrical instrument. And then we move to sampling and using our computers to manipulate to manipulate music and generate new uh, samples and new music with our computers using different softwares. You can think today about uh, auto tune to process human voice and fruity to generate music to generate different uh, samples, different music samples of different instruments. We can today really do a whole song from the beginning to the end using a computer. And all the musicians around the world, not really all, but the majority of musician composit compositions, compositors and so singers are using computers to produce music. Now, using this kind of, uh, this type of uh, of music composition and using our computer led us to a more dit digitalization of the music. Today we have a huge amount, really huge amount of uh, of music that is digitalized. Everyone now is listening to this music using our using our phones or computers or iPad or whatever device you are using to listen to your music. But you are mainly using it using a device that is digitalized. So there is a file stored somewhere with this music. We are no longer obliged to go to a concert or to go to somewhere to see a real person playing an instrument. We can play just a song and listen to it live. So with this, we had more content. As I said, we have a huge, really huge amount of data today and huge music available. I can think of even today uh, about uh, like SoundCloud platform, like platform that is open for everyone. So you can produce your music and just publish it to everyone. And so we have more artists also. Why more artists? Because we have more kind and types of artists from old, old, school, old school musicians playing on an instrument to more technical persons. I mean, think like engineers, like mathematicians that really don't have a lot to do with music, but they know how to use their computers, they know how to use computer science, and they know how to use the, the good and the right software to produce and compose, compose different music. So our music now is going is treated as a, as a file. So there's a lot of algorithm applied to this to our music. I can think of recommendation algorithms uh, used by Netflix, Spotify, or Deezer. So Spotify, for example, today can recommend to you the music based on your taste and based on the on the on what you listen to. 
based on your gen the genre of music you are listening to. So I I don't know if you can see this, but we are like representing this uh, our music, which is a file, which means numbers, and we are understanding it, and we are capable of classify to see to say this is rock and roll, this is rap, this is salsa, and whatever. So if you are like, for example, a person that listens more of of rock and roll music, so we be, we will be more likely to be recommended to listen to Metallica, to to for example Led Zeppelin or or ACDC or any rock band, and if you are if you are more of Latino uh, music, you will be, for example, recommended to listen to Cesaria Evora or Enrique Iglesias, Julio Iglesias, or this kind of music. So you are able to able to understand different genres of music. We are able today to process our music, our file, and even further, we are able to use what we call algorithm for music separation, which is really, really hard, really, really difficult. It means I can give a song or a composition of music and I'm able to separate each instrument individually. So I can get the sound of the guitar, sound of the piano, sound of the drums. I don't know if, if you can imagine this, but it's really hard to, to say that this is guitar, this is piano, this sound is a guitar and this sound is piano. And why not music generators? So today we are going to ask ourselves, can we generate music? And this is what we are trying to understand and this is what we're trying to accomplish. So to start, we have to learn about, to talk about Markov chain. What is Markov chain? So if there is an algorithm that was really, really widely used everywhere in every single field is Markov chain. From biology to mathematics to weather uh, prediction to, any field is using Markov chain, really. What is Markov chain? Basically, it's just modeling the probability of going from a point in, from a certain point, a certain state, to another state in a graph. So, what is Markov chain doing? Is taking all the data and then computing all the transitions possible from our data and then calculating the probability if a certain state is going to appear knowing f based on the previous subsequences of data and that's all this is markov chain this is just a graph and then you just go in to maximize this probability this in our case in our case in our study and for our music we are just going to model the probability of a note to appear after a certain sequence of a note of notes. So, for example, if we can check here, imagine we start with a C note with a five with a tempo of 500 milliseconds. What is the probability that the next note will be a D or an F sharp or an A, and go on? So we are in the state zero. We have like for example C, and we have a half chance to go to state one, which is the which is which is for example the D, and and we go on. But the problem with this is with the problem with Markov chains, it can only produce subsequences of notes that already exist in the music, which means we are never going to produce new music. We are just going to produce a subsequence that already exists because it's already occurred and it already has high uh, probability to occur. So we are not really generating new music. So how are we going to do? But since we are talking about Markov chain. The first person ever to try to generate music, to, uh, to, to represent music as an algorithm, to represent music as a mathematical representation and calculate the probability of occurrence of a certain note after a subsequence was Yanis Xenakis in 1955. And thanks to the internet, we can listen to what he produced using a uh, Markov chain. <laughs> Well, we can all agree it was bad, but this is what he did. It was really the first attempt ever to produce, to generate music using an algorithm. <clears throat> so we move on to neural networks. Why neural networks? Because neural networks, I think, is the answer. So in opposition to Markov chain, on the other side, neural networks are not really 
calculating the probability of occurrence or the transition from a certain data to another. No. A neural network is trying to generalize and trying to have what we call an abstract representation of all the data we give it to it. So let's imagine it's just like a model, it's just like a ball that can change its shape, so its weight, based on the information we give it. So in every new data we give it, it changes its weight, its, its, its shape, to generalize, to have this abstract representation, so it can fit all the variation of our data input. So it can be, whether it's an image, whether it's in sequence data, whether it's, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a matrix or whatever, or video or music or notes, we don't care. It's going to try to change its weight using what we call gradient descent. You can, you can search online if you want to have more technical understanding about neural networks. Gradient descent to change its weight to fit and try to generalize more about the input data. Then we have a second type of, the, of neural networks that we are going to use. We call it recurrent or RNNs, recurrent neural networks, which means the difference between uh, an RNN and a simple neural network is just, we just don't, we don't give just a new input, a new data information to it, to our neural network. We give it the new input and we give it an older version of itself. So. Basically, you are saying this is the new information, and this is what you what you have learned before. So try to learn from these two states. What was your mistakes? What 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 you have what you have done before? So it's it's going to try to model itself based on two information. It's like a memory. So the, we are giving it a new information and a memory, and that what you have learned before, and this can capture what we call sequence. So we are, going, we are going to capture a new information and what we have all the sequence before, what we have learned from the sequence we have learned before. So as I said, Markov chains trained on a set of data can only produce subsequences that exist in the data set, in the original data set. We, can, we are not really generating any new data form. But if we want to generate a novel data, we need to, to, to use neural networks. Because neural networks models are able to generate novel data by just extrapolate beyond the, the subsequences of a data set. RNNs are widely used today. And the first one to, to, to make really uh, RNNs become so famous is the project by Andrew, Andrew Karpathis, The Unreasonable Effectiveness of RNNs, in Mayo 2015 who was able to generate text in William Shakespeare style. So basically what he, da what he did was just simply train a model, an RNN, on all the books of William Shakespeare. So we generated, we, he generated, he just simply get all the books of William Shakespeare, get a model, train it on them, and then produce text in the same style of William Shakespeare. And there is another project that I like that you can go and search for it on Google if you are interested uh, because I'm a fan of Harry Potter is the Harry Potter and Deep Learning Experiment. So it's, it's, it's a group of students who just trained RNN, a model, on all the books of Harry Potter and try to predict the next chapters of Harry Potter, what will be, what will be the next uh, book of Harry Potter. And it was amazing. Go and check uh, for it. But there is a problem with RNN. What is it? So RNNs are limited by short-term coherence, which means that the memory I've talked before is short. We cannot have a, a long uh, memory. To long memory. Imagine we have a sequence that it, it is really, that is really long. For example, a Mozart has a sequence of notes which is really long. So. We, it's consisted of four parts. So like the first part is happy, the second part is a solo, the third part is a melody, and the fourth part is sad, for example. So when you are learning, when you are feeding your model um, the part which is the melody, he already forgets the first part, which was happy. He absolutely forget everything. He's just learning the happy part. So you are not capable of generalizing. So to answer, and this is because of a problem called vanishing gradient. You can check online for it. It's I don't want to, to be really technical in my presentation, but this is what we call vanishing gradient descent. So to answer this problem, we can use another 
we can use another model. It's called LSTMs, which is the answer to everything. <laughs> LSTMs, long short term memory neural networks. Simply is an RNN. LSTM is an RNN, but instead of giving just a new input data and an older version of itself to a layer, we are giving it three information new input cell, an older version of itself, and all what we have learned from the beginning, from the first hidden layer to it, to the two to, to it. So we are capturing all the information from the beginning until now. So this is why we have a long-term memory. We are capturing all the sequence. We are keeping everything. Honestly, to develop an LSTM is really easy. You can check online, you can write your own LSTM really simple and really quickly. Uh, if you want, you can even contact Contact me and can help you with this. There's absolutely no problem. <clears throat> Another type is called CNN, Computational Neural Network, which is published in 2016 by DeepMind, uh, a network called WaveNet, which is the first network to produce human speech. So this human speech was really accurate. No one had made the difference between the speech generated and a, and a real human voice. But the problem is we used a convolutional network, not an RNN. RNNs are used to treat sequential data, but CNNs, convolutional network, neural network, are used to, to process images. So here, what did DeepMind is just make the hypothesis that time and process time as a special, a spy, spatial dimension. It was absolutely amazing, and everyone was really stunned because no one did it before. No one produced a human speech. No one produced any sound before. It was really accurate. But to train this kind of model, I'm not able to do it with really, really high performance, very, very powerful GPUs to train this model. In 2017, Magenta, another company, did generate a monophonic instrument sound using WaveNet. So they took WaveNet and trained it on instrument to produce instrument sounds. Now we are getting to how to develop our own model. So the first question to answer is how we decide a proper representation of our music. Do we present it what our music is just one note? Is it a chord? Is, is it a chord? Is silence important or not? So to answer this, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but for me, it was just simply, I transformed the sequence of notes into a matrix, which means I get rows and columns columns is my time my timeline so first second 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 third second fourth second and etc and each row is a note so it's for example a c first row is a c second row first index uh, c c sharp b b sharp a a sharp and f and etc and then in my matrix i have just the zeros and ones so if i have a zero which means the, c, the, the note is not being played if it's a one, the note is being played. So if I go to the cell number five, for example, and the column number eight, it means that the note number five, which is, I think it's an F, at the eight second is being played. If it's a one, if it's a zero, it's not being played. And that's all, it's just a matrix. And hopefully I found a, a file format called MIDI that Stored the stored uh, store uh, notes just in this case, in this format, just the sequence as a file. So for treating my music, first uh, for now the best approach is to get it simple, to keep it simple, and to isolate isolate one instrument. Just work on just one instrument because to to generate music with a whole lot of instrument is difficult, really difficult to manipulate all this data, and even for human, I think. It's difficult to answer this question uh, because a music is the combination of different sequences of notes, of different composition of different instruments. So we are just keeping it one instrument for now, and we are trying to generate the next sequence of notes to be played. So I give in my model first sequence, example like like five seconds, and he's, it would generate the next five seconds or the next 10 seconds if this song continues. So I write my model, train it, and generate some music. Well, we are going to listen to the first attempt of generating music, and how does it sound like? It 
it's not really amazing it's not uh, wow but i mean it's really better than the mark of chain uh, <coughs> model i have another i give it to men in black by will smith and generate some other music And just the two of us by Grover Washington Jr. So this model was trained uh, on not really big data set and over like three to four hours to finish training and we generate this sample of music and you know what when i was preparing for this presentation and i liked really 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 much this project and i was i said to myself you know what i'm going to explore every single model i'm going to try everything and then i want to try what we call a gun so generative adversarial network what is a generative adversarial network to make it simple <clears throat> in fact we have two models we have what we call a generator and a discriminator. So we have here our data set, so our true data set. In this case, it's images, but it can be any kind of data. Images of handwriting numbers. <coughs> and we have a, a generator, which is a model that starts with a noise, which means black and white, and then try to generate a fake image. And we have a discriminator, another model, that will just tell us if it's a real image, that means an image that's come from our training set, or a fake image, which means an image that was generated by our generator. So we're going to train this model until, at a certain moment, uh, the discriminator can no longer make the difference between what is real and what is fake, if it's training set image or a fake image. At this moment, which means our 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 generator is generating images that resembles a lot our training set so at this moment what we're going to do we are going to take our discriminator at this moment we are going to take our discriminator out and keep just our generator and use our generator to generate even even more music or images and so this is what i did and the advantages of uh, gan is we are generating music absolutely new music we are not based on an old so sequence or pv sequence of notes so i was able to generate some music let's listen yeah it was a little bit bad i, I was not convinced but to be honest with you before recording this video really recording this presentation i asked myself i said why does it why does my gun just really generate bad music why why it's not good and then there's an idea that came to my head which is maybe the problem is not the gun maybe we are not listening to it good which means what we are generating in re really is music theory is notes but we are not playing it so i've ask myself what if I play the same music that I've generated on a real instrument does it sound good so I have two options whether I had to decode my uh, my MIDI file uh, find out the the notes learn all the notes one by one the sequence and try to learn it on, on a guitar and play it on my guitar or just looking on Google and hopefully maybe there is a software that can read MIDI files and let me try different instruments. And yep, it does exist, believe it or not. There is a there is uh, this software called Ableton. It's really amazing. So what I did on Ableton, I've simply generated two music. So I have trained my model on a drums samples and then uh, I generated another melody and then put them one next to other and the drum music I put a drum 
uh, drums on it and this ja melody I put uh, an oscillation which is I don't know what is it I just pick it out and I was able to listen to it one next to other and I was really stunned I was really really happy so when I listened first to the drums really good there is a tempo there is a rhythm and now if I add my second melody sound very good and I says as I said as I said I think the problem was not the generator but we just didn't play the music and hope you like I can also talk about some use cases there is juke deck it's amazing it's a website and a startup that generate music using AI and you can go and buy music and you have exclusive copyright for you the music is for you you have the rights on it and there is Iva music when I was searching for some state of the art and what was what was being done on music generation, I really liked this company. They generate music amazingly. I mean, they have now today clients from advertising, artists, farm compositions, and what they are generating is really amazing. And I really wanted to share with you one of their of their of their work. And it's really, 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 really amazing what they are generating. And it proves that we can really generate music today. Yeah, it was really amazing. You can go and check it. It's on the edge AI generated music. It's really, really amazing. Uh, so I hope you liked my presentation. If you have any question, I would be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much for joining.